Rolling about the barrel, Sam Peckinpah's strange preoccupation. So I first came across the director, Sam Peckinpah, when I was probably about 13. Parents out at the social club or the pub on a Saturday night and uh, taking advantage of watching the late night movies. Whereupon I came across a film called The Wild Bunch which has been pretty much unsurpassed in my view for all these years. I'm not going to go into details about The Wild Bunch. You can see by the poster who was in it and roughly what it was about. It was a pretty controversial film at the time, mainly due to the violence, uh, slow-mo violence, all that stuff. But I loved it. I thought it was great and I still do. I loved the cragginess of it. I loved the way the Old West was ending and these guys were just on a downer and it wasn't going to work out for them. The outlaw days were over and these guys were hobbling about trying to keep it together, trying to get the last, the last hit, the last gold that they'd ever get and they're reduced to arms dealing and in Mexico and it just ain't gonna go well. You can tell from the beginning, it's not gonna go well. But anyway, there's a scene in it where uh, these guys, including the great Warren Oates, who was a bit of a cult hero around my way when I was a bit older. They're in this like winery, I don't know what you call it, it's full of giant barrels of wine and they're shooting up these barrels and they've got these girls on their arms and they're all frolicking about in these giant barrels of wine having a great time probably the last great time they're ever going to have in their lives and it struck me as a very poetic and powerful kind of scene the whole film is wrought with this kind of gritty realism yet it's also extremely poetic visually poetic it's not the words it's the visuals that convey the poetry I think so anyway sometime in the 70s late 70s maybe early 80s I came across a film called Cross of Iron which is one of Peckinpah's last films Wild Bunch being made in 69 Cross of Iron being made in 1977 it's about a German platoon, another gritty, realistic kind of anti-war film. Yeah, behind enemy lines on the Russian front. And lo and behold, what happens? There's a barrel scene. They come across this platoon of Russian female soldiers resting. And there's a woman in a barrel who's joined by one of the Germans shortly after. And I thought, this is strange. It's like two films I've seen of Sam Peckinpah's and two films have got these barrels in them with people frolicking about. Well, I thought it's just one of those things, you know, sort of coincidence, you know. Then I came across a film much later, 1970 film, Sam Peckinpah, made shortly after Wild Bunch. Ballad of Cable Hogue, about a guy who finds water in the desert. It's a bit of a comedy. It stars Jason Robards and Stella Stevens. And what do I see? There's a barrel scene. They're frolicking about in a barrel. In fact, the poster for the film has the barrel scene right there, right up front. So I thought, this is this is a thing, man. This barrel stuff it's really going on for this guy so what's it all about well Peckinpah was known to be a bit of an alky maybe the connection between alcohol and some form of eroticism kind of came together with the barrel thing although the barrels are not always full of wine or beer they're usually full of water but they're very much barrels used for alcohol it seems to me I saw Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia which is a brilliant Peckinpah movie 1974 
I saw Straw Dogs, which was infamous and very controversial for reasons I won't go into, 1971. And the barrel wasn't there. There were no barrels that I can find. But I thought, anyway, let's have a little exploration and see where this barrel thing goes. Peckinpah's first major movie, if you can call it a major movie, studio movie, was a film called Deadly Companions back in 1961 with the great Maureen O'Hara. And if you look at the poster, as you can see it now, it's very, very barrel-like, you notice. But in fact, when I've seen the film, which I've only really seen recently, I can't see that scene. There's a scene where she's flailing around in a kind of pond, kind of murky pond or watering hole in the middle of nowhere. She's fully clothed. There is a slight scene afterwards where she's not quite fully clothed, but there's definitely no real barrel, although the pond and certainly the poster is hinting at that and maybe I'm seeing a cut version I think I'm seeing a cut version but there you go Major Dundee Peckinpah film with Charlton Eston and sent a burger in it 1965 I was familiar with this film I had come across it. it used to be on TV and there is a kind of romantic interlude between the two of them it's a kind of small lake kind of romantic interlude that you get in many movies nothing special but it is very watery I must add as you can also see that Santa Burger can really make the air stand up on the back of your neck enough said then there's the getaway with uh, Steve McQueen and Ali McGraw 1972 there's a watery scene in that where Steve McQueen is imagining himself frolicking about. But again, it's a kind of lake or a kind of river. There's certainly no hint of barrels going on there. Although again, it is wet, shall we say. It's a wet scene, as you can see, but nothing particularly out of the ordinary. So let's go back to the Wild Bunch. I think it kind of obviously been building up to this uh, with Deadly Companions and then Major Dundee and culminating in the Wild Bunch where he really went to town on the rolling about in the barrel bit. Um, you can see for yourselves apparently he hired local prostitutes because he wanted the studio to be responsible for paying for prostitutes in his movie. It was a very strange kind of cranky guy was pecking part but again very poetic and uh it's a beautiful scene it's uh, very full of fun and frolicking and just brilliant i think of course later in the movie it all goes to shit and uh i won't tell you the ending no spoilers but i'm sure you can imagine and anyway have a look at it brilliant film and let's get to Cross of Iron. I've got some photos and from this. And as you can see, uh, the barrel is certainly there. And uh, it's very prominent in that part of the movie. And uh, there you go. There's Peckinpah's strange preoccupation fully on show. And uh, it's really going to town. And we'll end this with uh, the Ballad of Cable Hogue. Uh, Stella Stevens really looking good in the barrel there and uh, it's certainly part of filmmaking that I very much miss uh, I haven't seen so many barrels on show since those days so it would be great if there would be a director out there get the barrels rolling and rolling back in the barrels again so uh, that's cool and uh, I'll see you about